Welcome to Dr. Aidan's Guide to English Language. In the next few minutes, using examples from key texts, I'll show you how to easily identify and analyse pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy can be confused with personification in general, but pathetic fallacy is very specifically the attribution of human emotions to something non-human. Now, this example is from Shakespeare's Macbeth. The night has been unruly. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. The night itself here is unruly, meaning disorderly and ill-disciplined, and the earth has a fever, a high temperature. What Shakespeare is evoking here is the idea that nature itself takes on human emotional qualities and is responding to the murder of Duncan. Another example of pathetic fallacy is when Romeo describes the dawn on the day he must leave Juliet and go to Mantua. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. The day is arriving, and it is jocund, meaning merry, cheerful, light-hearted. This use of emotion helps to convey the key idea that a new dawn and the beginning of Romeo and Juliet's married life should be a happy time, although we know it's not going to be so. Note also that this example of pathetic fallacy is made more powerful by being used in conjunction with personification. Here, the day is standing on tiptoe, trying to see over the horizon, reinforcing its desire to begin. Lastly is this example from William Wordsworth. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. Now, earlier in this poem, Wordsworth had used personification to describe a host of dancing daffodils. And now each wave of the nearby lake is personified as dancing. But more than that, both the daffodils and the waves feel gleeful, meaning mirthful and joyful. And, like in the earlier Shakespeare quote, we see the word jocund again. Another word meaning light-hearted and joyful, alongside gay, which means light-hearted and carefree. So what Wordsworth is expressing is how being in the company of nature is like being in the company of joyful people. They make him feel joyful. Now, because pathetic fallacy can get confused with personification, here's an easy way of remembering what each of the words pathetic and fallacy actually mean. Pathetic means producing an effect upon the emotions, whilst fallacy means false. So pathetic fallacy actually means attaching false emotions to something that does not feel emotions. The phrase pathetic fallacy was actually coined by the 19th century critic John Ruskin as an insult to poets like Wordsworth. But looking at these quotes, it's hard to fully agree with him. And there are few greater writers than Shakespeare. So when used sparingly, it actually powerfully reinforces the emotions being described. So I hope that this video will help you to identify and interpret pathetic fallacy in the plays, books and poems that you are reading or studying. And thank you for listening to Dr. Aidan's Guide to English Language. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you don't miss any of my future posts.